assalam alaikum guys let's talk about scapula the shoulder blade so guys what is shoulder blade uh, or scapula scapula is a thin bone of the body that is placed on the posterior lateral aspect of the thoracic cage the scapula has two surfaces three borders three angles and three processes we will talk about uh, these processes borders and surfaces one by one so guys let's talk about its side determination it has the lateral or the glenoid angle this one is its glenoid angle you can see it this one is its lateral or glenoid angle which is large and it bears the glenoid cavity it has a cavity you can see it this is a cavity this is called glenoid cavity and it has a dorsal surface this is its dorsal surface which is convex you can see it that it is uh, convex curved outward and it is subdivided into two parts by this uh, spinous process this one is spinous process uh, we are discussing the dorsal surface of scapula uh, the dorsal surface is subdivided into two fossa by this spinous process uh, uh, the superior one is supraspinous fossa and inferior one is infraspinous fossa and now come to its coastal surface this one is its coastal surface which has a concave subscapular fossa this one is its subscapular fossa and it is curved inward uh, it faces the uh, uh, ribs of the body it faces a rib cage that is why it is called a uh, coastal surface of scapula and it has a concave subscapular fossa this one is subscapular fossa so guys uh, always remember one thing that uh, when you are uh, describing a bone always keep the bone in its anatomical position and this one is its anatomical position and i am holding a uh, left uh, scapula its third side determination feature is that it has a lateral border this lateral border is its thickest border and it runs from its glenoid cavity to its inferior angle so guys now talk about the features of scapula uh, now first of all talk about its surfaces we know that it has two surfaces this one which face uh, which surface which faces the ribs is called its coastal surface and this one which is present at the back this is called its dorsal surface so guys let's talk about its coastal surface its coastal surface uh, which is concave inward it uh, it has three ridges one two and three you can see it uh, these are three ridges present at the coastal surface and it also has a fourth ridge uh, fourth ridge is here its fourth ridge adjoins the lateral border this one is the lateral border of scapula and its fourth ridge fourth ridge of coastal surface adjoins means it meets with the lateral border of the scapula and uh, now talk about its uh, dorsal surface this one this one is the dorsal surface of scapula this one is lateral border and this one is me medial border so guys this one is the dorsal surface of scapula which is con uh, convex outward and it is divided into two fossa by this spinous process this one this one is called the spinous process of scapula and this spinous process of scapula divides the dorsal surface into two surfaces uh, uh, two fossa upper one is supraspinous fossa and which is below is called the infraspinous fossa and these two fossa uh, supraspinous fossa and the infraspinous fossa these two fossa are connected by a uh, notch this notch is called spinoglenoid notch which is a connection between supraspinous fossa and the infraspinous fossa now talk about the borders of scapula this one is the lateral border and this lateral border in its upper end it has a infraglenoid tubercle this one is infraglenoid tubercle and this one is supraglenoid tubercle and lateral border uh, has infraglenoid tubercle at its upper end and this one is its uh, superior border and superior border near the origin of coracoid process this one is coracoid process near the origin of coracoid process it has suprascapular notch this notch this is called suprascapular notch and uh, the remaining is median border this one is the median border it extends from the superior angle this one is superior angle of scapula it extends from the superior angle to the inferior angle this one is inferior angle of scapula median border extends from superior angle to the inferior angle 
Now talk about angles of scapula. This is its superior angle which is covered by trapezius and this is its inferior angle. This one, this is its inferior angle which is covered by latissimus dorsi and this is its lateral angle. It is broad and it has a cavity that is glenoid cavity. That's why it is also called glenoidal angle, lateral angle or glenoidal angle. Now talk about the processes of scapula. We know that it has three processes. One is its this one at its dorsal surface. This one is its spinous process, and this one is acromion, and this one is coracoid process. It has three processes. Now talk about its spine or spinous process. This is its spinous process. You can see it that it is a plate-like, plate-like spinous process, and it has two surfaces. One is its superior surface and one is, is its inferior surface and it has three borders. See that it has three borders. This one, this one is its lateral border and this one, this one is its posterior border. Uh, it is also called crest of the spine and this one which is attached here to the uh, dorsal surface of scapula, this one is its anterior border. It has three borders. It is a plate-like spinous process. And now talk about uh, about its posterior border. This one is its posterior border. It is also called the crest of spine. It has two lips. This one is its upper lip, and this one is its lower lip. Lower lip and its upper lip. Now talk about the acromion process. This one is its acromion process. It has two surfaces. This one is its superior surface and this one is this one is its inferior surface. This one inferior surface and it has two borders. This one is its lateral border and this one is its median border and it has a face set for the attachment of clavicle to form the acromioclavicular joint. And now talk about coracoid process. Coracoid process is like uh, the beak of a crow and uh, it is slightly laterally and it is forward directed and it is finger like this one you can see that it is finger like and it represents the atavistic type of epiphysis now come to the attachments of scapula the multipinnate subscapularis arises from the median two-third of subscapular fossa multipinnate subscapularis arises from here and multi uh, and supraspinatus arises from median two third of supraspinous fossa and the upper surface of spine. This one is upper surface of spine. You can see it. And now talk about infraspinatus. Infraspinatus arises from median two third of infraspinous fossa, including the lower surface of spine. This one is the lower surface of spine. And now talk about the deltoid. Deltoid muscle arises from the lower surface, lower border of the crest of spine and from the lower border of acromion. This one is acromion and it's this one is its lower border. Deltoid arises from the lower border of crest of spine and from the lower border of acromion and now talk about the trapezius this is upper border of uh, spine trapezius is inserted into the upper border of the crest of the spine and into the medial border of acromion this one is acromion and this one is its, its uh, median border and now talk about the insertion of serratus anterior this one is costal surface and this one is Postal surface and this one is median border. Serratus in, uh, anterior is inserted along the median border of costal surface. Its first digitation, you know that it has eight digitations. Its, uh, its first digitation uh, or is, is inserted from the superior angle to the root of spine. This one is root of spine. And its uh, next two dig uh, digitations are inserted uh, at its coastal surface of median border uh, downward and its last five digitations are inserted at its coastal surface at the inferior angle. Now talk about the long head of bicep brachii. Long head of bicep brachii arises from the supraglenoid tubercle and the short head from the lateral part of tip of coracoid process. This one is coracoid process and this one is lateral part of tip of coracoid process from where uh, short head of bicep brachii arises. Now talk about coracobrachialis. 
Cracobrachialis arises from the uh, median part of tip of coracoid process. This one is median part of tip of coracoid process. And now talk about the insertion of pectoralis minor. Uh, pectoralis minor is inserted into the median border and superior surface of coracoid process. This one, this one is the superior surface, and this one is the median border of coracoid process. Here, the pectoralis minor is inserted, and the long head of triceps brachii arises from the infraglenoid tubercle and teres minor. Now, talk about the teres minor. Teres minor arises from two slips from the upper two-third of rough strip on the dorsal, uh, dorsal surface along the lateral border. This one is lateral border along the lateral border from upper two-third teres minor arises. Teres minor arises from its uh, lateral border by two slips uh, like this uh, by two slips and uh, circumflex scapular artery lies between these two slips. These two slips and circumflex scapular artery passes between these two slips. And now talk about the uh, origin of teres minor. Teres minor arises from the lower one third. This one is lower one third of the rough strip on the dorsal surface of lateral border of scapula. Now talk about the levator scapulae. Levator scapulae is inserted along the dorsal aspect of median border. This one is its median border along the dorsal aspect of median border from the superior angle up to the root of spine at dorsal surface uh, along the median border from the superior angle to the root of spine here we have insertion of levator scapulae and at, uh, at coastal surface we have insertion of first digit of uh, first digitation of serratus anterior and uh, downward we have uh, insertion of its other digit uh, digitations of serratus anterior and here we have insertion of levator scapulae this one now talk about the insertion of rhomboid minor and rhomboid major. Rhomboid minor is, is is inserted onto the median border opposite to the root of spine. This one, this one is the root of spine. Opposite to the root of spine, we have here the insertion of rhomboid minor. And the rhomboid major is inserted into the median border between the root of spine and the inferior angle. This one is root of spine and this one is inferior angle and, and this hole is median border. Here we have the insertion of rhomboid major and the inferior belly of omohyoid. Uh, now uh, place it in to its anatomical position. Uh, this one is its superior border. Inferior belly of omohyoid arises from the upper border near the suprascapular notch. From here we have origin of inferior belly of omohyoid. And now talk about the margins of glenoid cavity. We know that this is glenoid cavity. And these are the margins of glenoid cavity which give attachment to the capsule of shoulder joint and to the glenoidal labrum. Here we have attachment of capsule of shoulder joint and glenoidal labrum and the margin of facet on the medial aspect of acromion. This one is acromion. This one is its median aspect uh, of acromion where we have facet for attachment of clavicle. The margin of the facet on the median aspect of the acromion give attachment to the capsule of acromioclavicular joint. Uh, here we have attachment of clavicle. Uh, here we have a formation of acromioclavicular joint and the margin of this facet give attachment to the capsule of this joint, this acromioclavicular joint and the cracoacromial ligament. Cracko, acromion ligament is attached to the lateral border of the coracoid process. This one is coracoid process here at its lateral border. Cracko, acromion ligament is attached at one side and to the median side of tip of acromion process. This one is acromion process. This one is its tip and its medial side. This one is its medial side. Cracko, acromion ligament is attached at one side to the lateral border of coracoid process and at an other side to the median side of tip of acromion process. And now talk about cracohumeral ligament. Cracohumeral ligament is attached to the root of coracoid process. This one, this one is the 
coracoid process this one is its root at one side it is attached to the root of coracoid process and at an uh, an other side it will be attached to the humerus which will be attached here in the glenoid cavity region and now talk about the uh, cracoclavicular ligament cracoclavicular ligament here we have attachment of clavicle uh, like a rod we have an attachment of clavicle and from the uh, coracoid process to clavicle conoid and trapezoid parts of cracoclavicular ligament attached to the conoid and trapezoid ridges of clavicle and now talk about the transverse ligament the transverse ligament bridges across the suprascapular notch this one is suprascapular notch here the transverse ligament bridges and converts it this notch into a foramen which transmits the suprascapular nerve and supras, uh, uh, transverse ligament bridges here and converts this notch into a foramen and suprascapular nerve passes through this foramen and the suprascapular vessels lie above the ligament here we have transverse ligament above that transfer ligament there is passage of suprascapular vessels now talk about spinoglenoid ligament this one is uh, this one is spinoglenoid notch uh, it uh, it is converted into spinoglenoid foramen by the spinoglenoid ligament spinoglenoid ligament converts it uh, into foramen from which suprascapular vessels and nerve passes suprascapular and uh, nerves and vessels pass through this foramen this is all about the side determination features surfaces and borders angles of scapula and its attachments hope you guys uh, well understood these features and all about scapula uh, and uh, allah hafiz uh, remember me in your sincere prayers take care